Um, so my name is Diana Richon Bogwa. I'm the editor for Parents Magazine. I'll be the moderator for this session. And um, we are, tonight we're talking about uh, family online safety. Um, it's just a webinar to enlighten or educate um, parents on the importance of family, of online safety for our kids. And I'm really glad that we are joined by the experts themselves. Um, yeah, we have Patricia Mushiri from the Communications Authority of Kenya. We have Mongera Mutiga, who is an entrepreneur and parenting coach, and Evelyn Kasina, um, who is also a family IT consultant and a digital learning leader. So um, I'm going to give you like two minutes or rather one minute each to just briefly introduce yourselves a bit more uh, before we get into the details of the session. Um, also, our audience, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, please um, chat us on the chat box and we'll be responding as the session goes, goes on. So we'll start with you, Patricia. Just briefly introduce yourself. Um, my name is Patricia Mushiri. I am the Acting Director of Public Education and Awareness at the Communications Authority of Kenya. And I am also doubling as the Director of Corporate Communications. Um, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, child online protection is a matter or a subject that is very close to my heart. And uh, I will be giving highlights on what the authority has done, efforts we've made, uh, milestones uh, that we have uh, achieved as uh, we go by and by. Thank you very much. Uh, Wongera, please introduce yourself briefly. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Nice to meet you, Patricia. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Mongera Mutiga. I am uh, a dad. I am a husband. I am an entrepreneur. I run a company that does market research. And I'm also passionate about parenting. I am uh, a coach who helps dads to achieve their, their best in terms of their fatherhood. I run an initiative called the Papa Bear Initiative which is part of the Legacy Project Trust. Um, and what we do is we work with, with men to equip and engage them to be exceptional in their fatherhood. Um, as we know, you know, there's a big problem with fatherhood in the world, in the, in the country today. The statistics around fatherhood are, are shocking. Um, you know, the numbers are really high. There's up to uh, a third of all uh, families in the country, more than a third of all the families in the country are uh, fatherless. And it's not because men are not there. It's because uh, a lot of men are not taking up their role as fathers. And that's a problem that the society, we've not even begun to see the effects of that yet. Um, so my, initial, my initiative is to really try and engage with men to equip them to become exceptional in their fatherhood, take up their roles, to, to push forward, and to take up the challenges that, that it takes to be, to be a dad, and to raise the next generation with a real experience of fatherhood. So I'm really happy to be here. I'm glad for the, the work that Parents Magazine is doing, the work that um, you know, my colleagues, uh, Evelyn, uh, Patricia, are all doing in this area of parenting. And I'm happy to lend my voice to this conversation around how to keep our kids safe online. Thank you. Um, so hi, um, good evening. My name is Evelyn Kasina. I am very many things. Um, I'm a digital learning leader. That is a new... Um, a new heading I gave my, I, I got during COVID. Um, I learned, I was doing something on digital learning because I'm in the ed tech space. Um, I'm a family IT consultant, and under that we do a lot of trust and safety. Um, I run a company called Evminet, and we primarily work with children on child online safety. But then, because children do not live in a bubble and they do not live in a vacuum. We work with the people who are in the ecosystem, and I'm glad to see Patricia here because she's one of our, our partners. And um, we work with governments, we work with industry. Um, we are uh, at Evminet, we are certified uh, Meta safety partners with Meta, Google, and TikTok in sub Saharan Africa. So we, we really do uh, push initiatives on safety on their platforms. We work with the Kenya Foods Classification Board in terms of uh, creating awareness on parenting, digital parenting. And of course, with the Communications Authority, we have a lot of efforts that we make with them. And ideally, it's just to help um, 
those of us who are in the space or who interact with children understand our role when it comes to online safety and to allow children to be in a space where they enjoy being online, but they also um, they also enhance um, their safety because uh, we cannot run away from this space. So this conversation is really dear to me because um, even with, with all the communications and the conversations around uh, education right now, technology and safety are, are the core of it. So we need to keep continuing having these conversations as much as possible each and every time we can. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Thank you so much, our panelists, for that brief intro, uh, introduction. Um, so without further ado, I think because we have limited time and this is um, a conversation that could go on until tomorrow or even the whole week, um, let's just get started to it. Um, we realize that kids are now home. Um, they, they took their break today and it's going to be one long holiday. And you know, one of the things that um, we cannot be oblivious about is that our kids no longer um, play outside as much as we used to during our days. Um, most of the time now they're engaged with the uh, gadgets, yeah, your phone, your tablets. Um, so we need to be careful and, and just involve ourselves in, the te- in, the, in what they're, you know, engaging themselves with online. And that's why we're having this conversation today. So there's something called um, Child Online Protection and also the Smart Campaign. And I'd just like to mention that we, uh, as Parents Magazine, we've been running a campaign with um, CA, Communications Authority of Kenya, for like a month on just child online protection and, you know, to just enlighten parents to be digitally smart. Yeah, so um, perhaps, Patricia, we could begin with you. Just tell us a bit about what Communications Authority of Kenya is doing on um, the child online protection. Uh, Thank you for that uh, question. Um, CA has been in this space uh, a little over maybe nine or so years. We launched a robust child online protection campaign uh, in 2015. And uh, the reasons why we did this is uh, Kenya is a member state of the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, and certain standards, guidelines, frameworks have been developed by the ITU for member states. So we see it on the council of the ITU. And so we pick this up as a subject matter of interest. It's a global agenda and falls under the global uh, cybersecurity space. So as CA, we are proud to say uh, we have made efforts to protect uh, our own children or those uh, using the online platforms. And uh, we recognize this, especially during the COVID. So that uh, creation of awareness through booklets, through media campaigns uh, has really helped raise uh, the agenda of COP up in Kenya. Thank you. So thank you so much, Patricia, for those insights. Um, Evelyn, I know you have been working um, a lot with the whole um, online safety, and um, there's a lot that, you know, I'm sure you've experienced or heard um, from when it comes to cyberbullying. And um, there's a lot that um, parents are not aware about. Um, In fact, one of the stories that I did recently was about a parent who wasn't really you know, aware of what their children were engaging with, um, the content that they were engaging with online. Um, what are some of the experiences you've had? And, you know, what are some of the steps that parents could take to ensure that their children are not exposed to online danger, uh, any kind of threats, yeah? Yeah, um, the threats are very, very wide. Um, and I think most of the parents um, in 2022, as we sit here, have had to deal with a lot of things, but uh, our engagement right now when it comes to child safety is more of putting out fire, if I can, if I can use that terminology. We, and, and what we are doing actually in the industry is trying to ensure that the conversations now we are having is to really build capacities on how to engage and be a bit more proactive than, than putting out fire. Um, and some of the challenges that children really are facing, and I don't think it is predominantly on children, but things like um, cyberbullying is really, really big. Um, but then you'll also realize as we, we talk about cyberbullying, it happens a lot on, on Twitter. So even us as parents, we really still go through a lot of that stuff on Twitter. 
Um, the Communications Authority also re uh, released a report uh, just before the Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Yeah. So um, the, in the report, it really highlighted that gaming has become such a huge part of our children's lives. And we can't really escape from it. We can try and see how to let our children harness the space of gaming. But then, of course, in this, when they're gaming, they interact a lot with predators. And as parents who don't understand or uh, pay attention to the kind of things that children are interacting with, yeah. um, you know, gaming is a very big, big uh, platform for children. They're interacting. And I think right now as they're home, uh, one of the things that parents need to start thinking about and listening carefully is like the currency that the children are using online. So V-Bucks, Robux, um, those come from the platforms they're playing. And the challenge actually is that children are using either they are gambling their, their, their equipment or they're taking inappropriate images of themselves to leverage to get money, that, that online currency. And in that space, of course, there's a lot of misinformation um, as they're, they're putting out info, uh, content about themselves. They will be bullied. They will be blackmailed. They will be extorted. And parents don't get to interact with these things until it happens. So your child will come and say, you know what, unfortunately, um, I was chatting with this person. I didn't know who it was. I sent this kind of information. And now they are threatening to do ABCD. And at that point, really, we are putting out a fire. We are not equipping the child. Um, of course, the misinformation also is really, it's a lot. So I think as a stopgap measure, we need to help children first to learn how to, to fact check. It's really about creating a digital literacy skill where, of course, there's a lot of information that, that goes out there. Uh, people are being swindled, you know, but then when it comes to children, because they're very vulnerable, how are they fact checking what they're consuming? Yeah. And also what they're sharing out there. Um, their privacy also, the, the, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, identity theft. Also, that happens a lot with them because somebody will want to steal their their identity, go do their own things, and then the child is left bearing the burden of, of what has happened on the online space. The challenges really are many. But of course, I keep bringing out hope and saying that um, we can learn from what we hear, other people, you know, from the mistakes of other people, keep building capacity. And also because children are at home right now and they're big on, say, TikTok, they're big on uh, Instagram and TikTok right now. And one of the, the biggest challenges they're facing right now is trying to keep up with the challenges. You know, there's this dance challenge. There's something that has come up and they need to trend. How, how dangerous are the challenges that they are, they are, they are participating in um, going to take them to? Because, I mean, we have seen reports where children are even committing suicide because they're being told, you know, just hold your neck like this yeah. until, yeah, and then you're, you're streaming it live. But we all know when you hold your neck and you strangle yourself, you're denying oxygen in your head, then those challenges are really, really dangerous. So at what point do we intervene? It is about having conversations and not denying them being on that space. So we need to keep building our own capacities first so that as we build our capacities, we are helping them to be safe online from a point of information. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's very um, educative. And Mwangera, being a parent, um, I'm sure you've you know, experienced this with your kids um you know you get to interact with them at what point or um do you say you're supposed to you know check what they are looking at or do you think it's important to actually check what they are looking at the content that they are engaging themselves with and um yeah what has your experience been yeah um absolutely i i know that the internet is a wonderful place there's a lot of good things that happen on the internet, but there's also a lot of bad things. And, uh, it's also a dark place at the same at the same time. And it's just like life. It's just like the world. Um, the world has both beauty and very dangerous, dark things that happen at the same time. And I think you know the online space. It's kind of new to us, but it's it's a it's a parenting issue. Um, I think taking care of our children online is really a, a question of parenting. And you know, a lot of parents tend to sort of delegate the parenting to the device. Um, and, you know, for lack of uh, interest or lack of time or for whatever reason, you want your children to sort of be busy and you just want them to do their own thing. Some of us uh, are being deputized by the screen in terms of our parenting. So anytime you're tired or, you know, you're, you're fed up with your kids, you put them in front of a screen, plonk them in front of that screen, give them the tablet and, you know, they leave you alone. And it's it's a it's an it's a reflection of parenting um, as as a journey as a process um, as an experience, and that I think that the online um, dynamics that are happening right now 
are reflective of how we parent our children, how involved we are in their lives, over and above what happens online, in terms of their schooling, in terms of what happens um, in their lives um, as individuals. And if we're not on top of that, if we're not doing that as parents, then you know we're going to do the same. We're going to have the same nonchalance when it comes to their their online activity as well. So you know uh, we shouldn't be surprised if our children are doing all these things and are doing stuff under our noses if we're not involved with them and if we're not playing the role that we need to play as parents. Um, I think having said that, I think there's definitely need to be aware of what's happening with your kids. You need to know what they're doing. Um, yeah. You know, there's this notion that. They are, they are individuals, they have their own rights, they have their own space, and you know you need to let them do their thing or learn yeah. their the ropes their own way. I, I don't particularly agree with that because they are, they're still kids. You know They need to learn. It's the same way if you wanted to, your kids to go uh, to town by Matatu. Mm. You wouldn't just go drop them at the stage and expect them to know what to do. You have to walk through the process with them. You, know, you have to go down with explain to them the dangers, explain to them where the stops are, show them how much money it is, you know, walk them through it so that when they're doing it on their own, at least you've guided them through. And that's all. It's a parenting process. You instruct, you train, um, you know, you discipline if you need to, and then you allow them to do it. And that's how they grow. What happens with a lot of parents is that they just let their kids go. Uh, and their kids come up with all these things and say, oh, you know, there's this thing that we're doing. There's Roblox. There's this new Minecraft. There's this other new thing that's come up. And because you don't know what's going on, you kind of let them do what they, what they want. And that's wrong. I mean, that's a, a failure of parenting. So, you know, this online conversation that we have is very critical. I think we need to reflect on our role as parents in the growth of our children. We need to see the internet as a tool that we can use to help these kids achieve their full potential. But it's not something that is just used without um, supervision or without guidance, right? Um, you wouldn't let your child cook a meal and put on the gas. Um, you know, they can burn down the house. If you haven't guided them, you haven't shown them. And it's the same thing with this online stuff. We shouldn't be intimidated by all this terminology that looks so foreign to us. You can learn. You can actually get involved with your children, understand what they're doing, and learn how to, how to engage so that you're able to guide them. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, then they're going to be raised by, by the world. You know, there's a Swahili saying, um, the world is going to teach them and it's going to teach them the wrong stuff. So we really have to be involved as parents. Um, and I think that's something that's critical for any parent. Absolutely. Um, I totally agree. And I think um, every parent here, everyone agrees with that. Um, we all need to be involved with in our kids' lives in whatever way, especially in this day and age when there's all manner of um, content online. Um, I, I'll go back to you, Patricia, um, about what you talked about, the child online protection. And I know Communications Authority of Kenya is really big when it comes to, you know, family online safety. Um, perhaps just uh, put, a, put us to speed um, on where uh, CA has gone or rather reached to, um, in terms of the, of the face, in, in terms of child online protection. What, what are some of the achievements that you've been able to, to, to achieve? Okay. <clears throat> Uh, thank you. Um, I think some of the things we've done, um, we've, we've done uh, heavy duty lifting in some areas, uh, but we've also uh, gained some uh, salient uh, achievements. And just allow me to uh, mention a couple. One, um, Communications Authority of Kenya recognizes, and that's why we're having this conversation today, that uh, matters children are the responsibility of, of all of us in society. And of course, the government agencies, as I mentioned earlier, whose primary uh, responsibility under the law is to create the legal frameworks to make this happen. Now, uh, one thing we've recognized, and why it's a big achievement for us, is the whole issue of partnership. Uh, the whole issue of uh, the role of collaboration when it comes to child online protection. Now, the ITU, which is the UN agency in charge of ICTs, uh, recognizes or promotes that when you're having this conversation on COP, as players, you need to collaborate with others. So it's not an end-to-end -end responsibility for any one of us, not a government agency, not an institution, not even an armed state actor. So we've created a pool of uh, partners, uh, over 30 partners, and these have included 
uh, operators, licensees, non-state actors, players, uh, 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 advocacy players such as Evelyn and others. We work very closely with a lot of the uh, state agencies, Kenya Film Classification Boards, and several others. So we've uh, created a pool of expertise, uh, including Kenya, uh, Kenya Councillors Association, recognizing that everybody brings something to the table. So I would say that's one major achievement. Two, the other one I'd say is uh, we've uh, invested heavily in awareness campaigns. And last, uh, in 2021, we we're fortunate to have the first lady, the former first lady of the Republic of Kenya, uh, Her Excellency Margaret Kenyatta, launched this COP campaign. So what did that do for us? It gave us visibility, it gave us traction, it gave uh, the campaign prominence, and uh, the, the campaign was dubbed Wesi to Chesa to Cyber Smart. So we've uh, created platforms of awareness. We're now recognized internationally and in Africa as one of the member states or one of the countries that have really tried to put uh, our money where our mouth is. So that is uh, another achievement in terms of uh, uh, creating that awareness and really having the youth and the children knowing that please enjoy yourselves online, but there's a state agency or there are state players, uh, their government uh, parameters by which you're protected. It's good to know that there's somebody looking out for the children of Kenya. The other thing I, I, uh, I wish to mention, which is very important to us, we're a big player in Kenya Music Festival. I don't know um, who among you I remembers. I was in school a long time ago, but uh, the Kenya Music Festival <laughs> was, it was just the moment that we all looked forward to. A lot of us uh, got confidence in terms of talking from just acting in uh, you know the dramas. So CA is a major sponsor of Kenya Music Festival. And uh, we just, uh, the festival has just been concluded, I think around August. And we are there exhibiting um, probably uh, our exhibition area is attended by over 100,000 children. So what we do is we set up a classroom uh, scenario where they come, they sit uh, from different schools, and we actually take them through the smart rules. The smart rules are the do's and don'ts of what not to do on the internet. So I would, I would uh, say the Ministry of Education, Kenya Music Festival Secretariat is a major partner. And I feel uh, as part of the team that initiated that engagement, that has been a major, major achievement for us. Earlier on, I talked about um, the game. I think uh, it's important to note that gaming, our children or our grandchildren for some of us are really involved in, uh, in gaming. And uh, so we actually uh, collaborated with an innovator who developed a game for us. We've engaged the Kenya curriculum of uh, education. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to influence uh, in the development or review of the curricula, whether COP can be brought in as a thematic area within the uh, Kenya, uh, within the school uh, curricula. So those are some of the things we've done. There are many. We've uh, engaged uh, partners through uh, what we call CAPTCHA, or these are annual school, all headmasters meet once a year. We're very big in that event. I think my team is leaving for it next week. And uh, so we have uh, a captive audience of all the headmasters in Kenya, where we seek an opportunity through a sponsorship to make a presentation, to engage teachers, to listen to complaints. Actually, you'd be surprised when it comes to teachers and, and what, what um, in terms of the, the pool of uh, expertise, in terms of what children are going through in schools. So I would say our engagements are a major uh, achievement for us. And maybe the last one before um, I, I finish is, uh, we've actually asked for an approval through our ministry, uh, as in uh, cabinet approval, to have 
CA facilitate the development of a national strategy on COP in Kenya. And this will be done with the technical expertise of ITU. So it will be one, pr probably I, I'm not very, um, I'm not aware which other country in Africa has done that. So I think we'll be one among uh, the few who are going to have a national strategy where all of you as players are going to have a voice. So we are going to have, you know, if it's capacity building experts, if it's counseling experts, if it's addiction experts, if it's our licensees, parents need to be on the table where we all come together and develop a national strategy for Kenya. So I'd say those are some of our achievements. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patricia. Um, actually, what I wanted to say is that the, some of the hashtags that we were using um, for the campaign, like you had said, is um, online safety. Who is it to Cheza to call cyber smart? Um, what I wanted to highlight here is that we can use those hashtags to, even as we continue with this conversation, yeah, to just do the hashtags um, to call cyber smart. Who is it to Cheza? These are some of the hashtags we have been using, and it's, it was part of the smart campaign. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Those are so, such big um, achievements, especially for CA. And even what you said about the drama festivals, um, I could see a lot of us, um, you know, raising our hands to just relate to what we experienced when we were younger. <laughs> so for some of us, um, yeah, but it's a good experience. And I know 100,000 kids, it's a lot. Those are a lot. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be change um, when it comes to this. Um, Evelyn, let me just get back to you um, in terms of um, the online dangers that we talk about um, with the kids. Um, how are we able to control um, screen time? Is it possible for us to actually do that and say um, our children should have, for example, a number of hours um, for, the, for this particular, uh, for, for the day or for the morning or in the afternoon and, you know, encourage other activities? Um, when it comes to to being online. Okay. Um, I think just before I answer that, I will I will add on to what Patricia said. She forgot Kenya Scouts because they also partnered with the Scouts movement. And I think also because it's a very organized um, institution, if I may use that word, within the schools, it's also a place where a lot of um, online safety uh, conversations to happen through the scouting movement mm. um, and we also partners with the scouts so that's why I know that there's a lot of work happening uh, there. Okay. So this question you've asked is very interesting because um, every time people ask me also when is the right time to give a child a phone for instance I don't think there's a right time because at the moment even when you see a pregnant lady they already create a footprint for their child even before the child already comes to the world, which means that child has access to some digital life, even without their consent. Um, we are feeding our children. I think Papa Bear has just talked about us delegating, uh, you know, um, the parenting to screens. So even our children are being fed watching Teletubbies, Coco Melon, and that kind of stuff. Can we limit their screen time? Yes and no. Um, I think the conversation would be uh, what kind of what kind of engagement can we have with our children, especially when they're at home, on how they're engaging um, technology? I can see my internet is a bit unstable, so I hope I'm still clear. Um, when I'm teaching parents and I'm creating capacities, I tell parents it's good to have two sets of screen time, when they're in school and when they're on holidays. Because during school time, I think we normally have a very strict schedule. So some, for some families, you know, there's no TV from Monday to Friday. And then of course, over the weekend, there's so many things happening. So you find maybe their, their interaction is not that much. But imagine you need to go to work and both parents are out of the house and it's raining, like right now it's really raining. So you can't just tell the kids go outside and play because they, they don't need to be in, in front of the screen. It's a bit impossible. And as we know it today, their playground has gone hybrid. And by that, I mean, even when they're outside playing, they're behind a screen, technically. Sometimes they're behind somebody's phone somewhere. So their playgrounds has really gone online. Um, I mean, hybrid because, yes, they will play outside, but then, of course, they want to, to stay inside and play a lot. So the conversation I have with parents, and, and probably it's something we can all adopt, is to understand what type of screen time to engage at what point, yeah? So, of course, in the morning, 
Um, let your children from whatever ages they are come up with some chores that they can do so that before any screen is on, they have done certain things. You know, if it is brushing their teeth, having breakfast, those who are washing dishes, those who are washing clothes, depending on how your, your household runs, let them engage in a chore. And at least the least they can do is get out of their pajamas. That's what I keep saying. At least let 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 lunchtime not find you in your pajamas. That's just a no-no, yeah? And then if a screen has to come on, is it productive screen time? Because there's what I call productive screen time, there's passive screen time, and then there's the collaborative one where they're on social media or they're, co they're communicating with their friends. So productive screen time here would be they're doing something online and their interaction, there's some sort of interaction. So are they coding? And these are the things now parents need to start asking. Um, what are the skills I need to have my child learn so that when I'm releasing them to the marketplace, they have these skills? Coding is one of them. It's like swimming. It's a life skill. Um, are they playing chess? Are they doing music? Are they utilizing, you know, they're doing something they've recorded, they've created content they've put on Pinterest. There's some sort of interaction. That is what I call active screen time. Make sure, even if they're not going outside, there are certain breaks in between this interaction. So make sure you put those breaks. It's not just one continuous uh, spot of time. Let them have some sort of breaks. Uh, when they're having meals, let those screens be away. The wakule kama hakuna screens karibu na wao. But I think we also have to train them. We have to show them that we can eat food without screens. I think we, we have the bigger problem. And then um, I keep saying the, 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 the Netflixes, this... Um, Passive engagement, we just sit and we are like this and we are zooming into the TV. There's no sort of entertain, there's no sort of interaction. Can it come to us at the end of the day? And then as a family, at what point do we all put our screens down and interact as human beings so that we're not losing, you know, human to human interaction? And and I, I keep saying those are spaces, especially when kids are on holiday, you have to be very intentional with that time because you will find a parent comes. At seven, kids already ate or they want to eat at a certain time. That has to be a very in intentional thing that we do. Let's eat together if we can. And as we're eating together, no screens. If it is family movie time, it's only one gadget at a time, which means even us as parents, if our children are watching something, we can show them, demonstrate to them that we can keep our phones aside and watch that one screen. Because there is so much we can do when we pre-screen content and we say, oh, fine, it is seven and above and whatever it is, but then there is certain things that happen when a movie is streaming and you see your children, you know, they've reacted in a certain way, you know, just the like demonstration of what happened here. You 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 tend to miss those things when a, a, a movie is streaming and you're behind a, a, a screen, like probably your phone. So I think with with just creating certain, certain rules or certain engagement uh, conversations would be good. Um, I keep telling parents again, your children are different. I have two kids who have totally different personalities. They love different things. So are we able to also ask them, um, what are your interests? When can you apply them? Um, if it is shared gadgets, at what point do we have a commonality of what is in the shared gadget? Because those are normally, I find screens are a pain point for people. They, they, there's so many arguments that come. You know, this one wanted to watch this. That one is for a younger child. That one is too violent. At what point do we uh, agree the TV is a shared uh, gadget? This is what we can watch that everybody in the house is comfortable. If people are behind different screens, are you able to create zones in the house such that they are not in their bedrooms with the door locked and then you don't know what your kids are doing? Have an open door policy. If you have to be in your room, open door, computer facing the door so that any parent who is just walking around is able to see at any point what is happening in the screen. Um, I know sometimes it's controversial to, to, to say don't have earphones. I keep saying those earphones. Eh? You don't know what your child is listening. Let, this, let the noise be there for your own peace of mind so that at least you're able to hear what they're listening to. And of course, in that case, again, that's why I say create things like tech-free zones. Are we going to the toilet with our phones? Are we eating in the dining table with our phones? That kind of stuff. So if we are able to create some conversation, because it's not something you can put and decide you as a parent, because you're the adult, you're not complying. Let's have a, it's, it's all about conversation. It's all about conversation. And then of course I keep saying, and this is something even you can do for yourself in your own house, you probably have more data enabled gadgets than you have toilets. So think about all the gadgets that, you know, that connect to the internet only in your house, then count the toilets you probably have more gadgets, which means at any particular point of the day, somebody is behind a gadget. So what are they streaming? Is that is Are we able to have a conversation around that streaming? So that when you're thinking of protecting or putting, you know, the blockers, which 
delay. I think the blockers for me, I call them delay because yes, of course, you don't want your seven-year-old or eight-year-old, even your 15-year-old to watch porn, but that is a conversation either way you have to engage. So yes, you can have, you know, block sites. Um, then of course, the sites will keep giving you feedback because maybe your child is trying to put in something there and then it has been blocked from their seeing, but that doesn't mean because you saw it on the back end, you don't engage in a conversation. So I think this, the, the, the policies we put to block, 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 give us an opportunity to say, okay, fine, I think I saw, I saw something that you were trying to search. Can we have a conversation around it so that at least you get to find out where, where, where was this going? Where did it come from? What did they understand? What are they trying to do when they were searching such kind of things? So that it gives us an opportunity to see where our children's head frame is. Also, because the ecosystem of the child is large, blocking for me is not a solution. I might block my house and I send my, my kids to Papa Bear's house and they don't know what happens there. And that is a place where my kids can access technology. In school, they access technology. At the playground, they access technology. So we also need as parents to understand who has access to my child and what kind of information will come when my child goes to their space. So that even for you, when you're saying, okay, you can't do this, you can't eat, it always has a why. And this is, as he said, it's not a, it's a conversation and it is throughout the parenting. If you look at the... Um, all these platforms our children are logging into right now, it needs, your child needs to be 13 years and above to be on those platforms. So between 13 and 18, there's such a long time for you to have so many conversations, you cannot even exhaust them. So that by the time they're turning 18 and you take them you know, to the chief, I don't know where they'll be getting their IDs from, but when you take them to that place and you say, okay, now you are an adult, you know you've given them now a responsibility to take ownership of everything they do they need to, ha to have a grounding. And that grounding only happens below the age of 18. So we have quite a number of things to discuss with them, but over a period of time, depending on how the issues are coming, also depending on what we are seeing happening um, out there. And I think this platform is good because at least we get to say, you know, the Communications Authority of Kenya being government, this is what they've given us. We are coming to add on to this. So we, we, we can't feel lost. We can't say we don't know because the information is out there. Yeah. Wow, um, that's a lot, <laughs> but so educating. Um, I mean, Lily says in the comments, um, she's, she's loving the conversation. She's, she has been struggling with screen time. Um, so she's thankful for the way you've broken it down. Um, and I think it's very, it's, it's the same story for so many parents. Um, and you know, Evelyn, so many parents as well use the, the phone as an emotional pacifier. Um, when your child is crying for, for something, you're like, okay, first you watch cartoon. I mean, how, how do parents deal with that as, you know, the younger kids, especially? Um, no, okay, you can add on to it, but I was just saying, I think that is being lazy because um, we were not brought up that way. We used to find things to do. And this is the one thing I tell my children. Your boredom is not my business. So your child's boredom is not your business. So don't make it your business. Let them figure out what to do with themselves. As long as it's not life endangering, their boredom is not your business. Period. <laughs> Mwangere, what do you have to say about that? Have you have you had experience with that with your kids um, where you had to use your phone to calm them down because they are throwing tantrums and they're getting out of control? Um, what, what, what has been your experience? Yeah, I haven't. Uh, fortunately, I haven't needed to do that. Um, my kids are, are a bit older, so this... When they were much, much younger, the internet was not what it is now. So um, I, I fortunately haven't had an opportunity to do that. But I completely agree with even, you know, we, we find ourselves wanting to entertain our children and act like, you know, um, them being bored is a, is a crime or it's going to damage them in some way. If, if anything, it actually makes them more creative because they then have to figure out how to entertain themselves. Um, you know, in, in my house, what, what happens is uh, screen time is, is measured. And so when you don't have screen time, you have to figure out what to do. And it has resulted in a lot of creativity. People write stuff, people come up with, you know, all manner of games and all stuff that they wouldn't have done if they had, if they were spending that time online. So I, I don't think it's, it's healthy to use the phone to distract our children. Um, you know, it's a, it's a lazy way of, of parenting. It's delegated parenting. You really have to um, get to the root of what's happening and allow your children to thrive because if, if they have to be entertained in order for them to uh, stay calm, then they're going to become dependent on these gadgets, on these devices and on this, uh, these platforms. 
and you're going to get to a point where they can't do anything productive without uh, that. And how is that different from drug addiction or uh, alcohol addiction? And we don't want that. We want our kids to be able to stand on their own two feet and we give them a strong chance of success by allowing them um, to come up with stuff on their own without having to depend on a gadget or on a platform. Yeah. You, you mentioned that your kids are a bit older um, and I'm sure at this point they've gotten to interact with the internet um, for a while. Are they, yeah. Have they ever been um, exposed to any kind of online danger and were they able to communicate that to you? Have you given them yeah. that? That's, yeah. So yes. Um, so I have, a, I, have a teenage, I have three kids. Uh, one's a teenager, one's a preteen, the other one is much younger as eight. Um, and the reality is that they're interacting with the internet uh, quite a bit. Part of it is schooling. During the COVID time, they had to be online to engage with their, their peers and to do schooling stuff. Um, they also have to do quite a bit of research even now online. Um, and I know what has happened. We've, we've had an incident where they were in a room. Um, uh, it's actually a classroom setting on Teams. And some strange person logs in and starts posting all manner of crazy stuff on the, on the, on the chat. Um, and it, it was scary. So the kids were all shocked, like, what, what, who's that and what's going on? Um, so we had to just come in and let them know that, you know, that happens sometimes. Um, we had to get the school, let the school know that that was happening and they sort of beefed up their security protocols, et cetera. So that was a good thing. Um, I know one of my kids um, in the process of playing a game online was then sort of approached by a stranger just asking questions. And it's, it's usually very innocuous stuff. It's not like, you know, uh, take off your clothes or anything crazy like that. It's just innocuous. Like, you know, who are you? Where are you from? Which country? And stuff like that. And it starts to slowly creep in uh, because they are building trust with a stranger. Um, so just letting them know that, you know, that, that conversation was, was inappropriate. Um, and let's not have that anymore. Uh, we've tried, uh, my wife and I, have tried to limit how much time these guys spend um, online. So we've said, no gaming online. So fine, you can play a game. You know, they have this game they call Minecraft, which has all this. They have servers and all this stuff. It's a whole thing. Um, and they, they create worlds and all that stuff. And it's the kind of game that you can play with other people. And what we've said is you cannot play with other people unless you know who they are offline so that there's, there's a, a measure of control. Otherwise, you know, because the experience is the same. Whether you play the stranger or people who you know, it's, it's the same experience. So as a sort of like a stopgap in terms of protecting them from exposure to strangers, we sort of limit, limit that. Um, and then now there's an extra layer of that conversation where we're saying, you know, we need to know what you're doing. So just because you know somebody uh, doesn't mean that you, you cannot do, get up to some mischief or do something wrong. So again, being able to supervise and know exactly what they're playing with whom and for how long and what does it look like. Um, so some of the stuff they play is pretty technical. Um, and, you know, if you're not into gaming, it can be a bit boring. But you, I, I've found myself having to get involved, right? Like, so I need to know. Uh, they come and show me some of the games they play, and I'm like, I don't understand the thing that's happening. But for the sake of being in touch with your interests, I'm going to try and learn how to play this game. Um, so that's part of what we've, we've, I've, I've tried to do. I know that, uh, and just back to a point that uh, Evelyn had made earlier, I just to reiterate that you see the the the, the challenge with um, the online dynamics is that you know the, the internet is going in it's not going anywhere okay the internet is here to stay and it's going to be a reality for our children moving forward um, and so we have to give them the ability to stand up when things are not working out okay we need to give them convictions about what is wrong and what is uh, right and what is not uh, appropriate. Because these kids are going to go out there and they're going to meet other people who don't have the same values as you. And when they are there, they need to be able to stand up and say, no, this is wrong. Yeah, It's wrong for me to watch this video. It's wrong for me to watch this cartoon or this game or that person is not doing the right thing. And if they don't have those convictions from the home, then what happens is when they go out there, they, the point of reference is whoever seems interesting at that point in time. So that's why it's important for us to get involved. We can't close our eyes and say, no internet, I'm not going to let you be online ever. Because that's not real. That's not realistic. They need to be online. They, the, the internet has so much value for them. But just like it is when they go out into the world, they need to be able to stand on their own two feet and deal with the realities that will come at them. And that comes from building a strong foundation of strong values, clarity about what, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, knowing what is um, the right uh, kind of conduct online. And that's something they learn from the home. They can't learn it from school. School is overwhelmed. They don't have time to deal with one 
or two children, you know, it's a, it's a conveyor belt. They're trying to get kids out the door, you know. Um, and no offense, I know one of my teachers is watching. So no offense. I know you guys are trying your best. But the truth is, your mandate is to get these kids educated. Uh, it's not necessarily to teach them values or to teach them how to deal with, with life. That's the parent's job. And so I think as parents, we need to be very active in that process and not just leave it up to fate or just hope that they'll figure it out on their own. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Mongera. Um, just to take you back to the games, uh, you know, there's a game that um, CAK has. Um, they, they create, it's called Soldier Game. I, I think uh, Patricia had mentioned it earlier. Um, anyway, on a lighter note, but you can check it out as a parent, as the parents were here. And also just to ask all the audience, um, in case of any questions, please chat in the box, uh, in the chat box. Um, and of course, our experts will answer all the questions. Um, thank you so much, Mongera, for all that, um, all those insights. And just talking about the educators, as you say, I'd like to bring in Patricia on this um, to just tell us if CAK has been um, engaged in maybe the Ministry of Education in terms of bringing the online safety or, yeah, online safety rules um, in schools. Um, is there anything that uh, you are doing with the Ministry of Education in regards to that? Okay, um, uh, thank you. I mentioned in my opening remarks that uh, CA recognizes the policy uh, role of Ministry of Education when it comes to all matters children, not just education, but um, the growth, the management uh, of that whole sector. So towards that end, uh, as here we've engaged the Ministry of Education, we've even developed a concept uh, paper uh, when it comes to developing a manual for school schools on internet safety. So it's an ongoing uh, conversation. Uh, so we've engaged the ministry to that end. That is work in progress that's still going on. And we do recognize that uh, we will not be successful in uh, the role of online safety without uh, being held or rather a handholding from the Ministry of Education because they are the ones who understand the psychology of children, the, the growth of children, the challenges that children face. So us as uh, CA, uh, we value the Ministry of Education as a, as, a, uh, as a partner. The other thing I'd mentioned, of course, was the development of curricula, which is still within the education spectrum. We've engaged uh, KACD with respect to influencing uh, some parameters uh, re regarding online safety. And uh, we recognize this specifically during the COVID when we realized that uh, almost 70 or so percent of children in Kenya uh, and even further afield were using the internet for classroom, for homework, uh, for research. So we actually reached out to IKICD uh, as a partner because we recognized that they had a portal where they, uh, what they call the Kenya Education Cloud, where they were putting uh, the curriculum and where, child, uh, where children and teachers could uh, really reach uh, the content, education content. So in that space of education, we've actually had a conversation with the ministry and with KSCD. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I can see our time is almost up, but I think we can just, because we plan to have this conversation again, and, and this time we want to even involve um, educators, as you say, uh, because most of the time our kids are in school um, and these are the they are teachers are uh, our second parents, you know, um, and it's important. Their role is very important in our kids' lives. Um, perhaps we can just do one round of, um, you know, closing or conclusion um, remarks. Um, I'll start with you, Evelyn. Um, you know, the importance of the role of parents in, um, in our children's lives when it comes to technology. I um, just wrap it up, summarize it somehow. <laughs> okay. Um, I even I wanted to add um, something when um, Mongera was talking. Okay. But um, uh, in summary, uh, as you're telling me to summarize, uh, 
we cannot abdicate our role in our children's lives to any other person apart from ourselves. I keep saying values are taught at home. So just the way you would take your children to a school, it has to be based on something that you want to extend from the house to the school, to where you stay and stuff like that. So that role primarily is ours. And I keep saying in the ecosystem of the child, um, and I think I'll share on the, on the platform, our website, so that you get to see the ecosystem of the child. The, the primary influence of a child is the parent. And I keep adding there the guardians, like, you know, our nannies, our house managers, because they also spend quite a bit of time with our kids, especially when we're not at home. Um, so we cannot really abdicate that. So values will be taught at home through osmosis. Um, I think we keep reminding ourselves, we don't know how these things, we left them in school. Osmosis, chemistry, biology. Um, we have to have conversations. I keep saying you have to be interested in what your children are interested in um because the way i mean when when you talk to children nowadays and you ask them if they're on facebook they look at you like such a you know such a dinosaur something you know that they're on other platforms which we have no clue how they operate and so it is our responsibility to go down to their level and start seeing things from their eye view so that if it is tiktok you really don't need to be on tiktok but just ask yourself why are they on that platform what is it that is pushing them to that platform as opposed to this other one um, so that at least if there are things you need to teach yourself around safety, it is your responsibility to learn them. And because there are very many free tools on safety out here. So I wanted to just add, if your children are using like um, a Windows machine, you know, Microsoft Family Center, there's somebody who's saying they're struggling with screen time. What I've done for my eight-year-old is um, I've set up uh, an account for her through my, my link, my account. And when her two hours are done, she actually has to request me for extra time. And when she's requesting for that extra time, she has to say, I was watching a video and it has maybe five more minutes. So I'll add her 10 minutes if it's a discussion that we've had. And I keep telling parents, when your children are misbehaving in terms of screen time, and you had a constant conversation with them, don't take away the device take away. So if they extended maybe by one hour, 30 minutes or whatever, in their next schedule of uh, watching, take away 30 minutes so that at least they get to know, yesterday I abused the time and I'm being punished by time being withdrawn. Um, because I keep saying when you keep blocking the internet, a knife in the kitchen is a very useful tool. So when you block the internet from them, that is really what you're doing. Family link, Google, if your child is under 13 and you create for them an account, uh, primarily you become the guardian to that account until they're age 13. And I think it's very important for us, anytime we are creating accounts for our children, to be very honest with the age. Because there are platforms that have created security based on the age of the children, like TikTok. Um, when your child is between 13 and 16, they can't be discovered, so nobody can search your child's name. They don't have chat um they can't go live and those are very specific um policies that have been put in place to protect children until they're at that level so when your child is 16 and above of course as i said you have such a long time to have serious conversations with them about the responsibility of being online so again this conversation cannot be had in school in church or anywhere else values are taught at home so don't abdicate that um to the internet so i think that would be my parting shot Okay, just uh, a question before you leave. Um, there's someone at the, uh, in the audience asking, what are some of the block of the blocks that we can put on a smart TV? So you, the, the, the ones you've mentioned, um, do you have an answer to that? Yeah. Yes, so depending on which smart TV you have, um, under the settings, there's parental control and then there's privacy. So if you're putting your machine onto the internet, remember, it's just like a phone. So if you're putting it onto the internet, you're, you're probably going to log in with an account. So probably a Google account or something. But inbuilt applications are there under uh, digital well-being. I think all of these platforms, the TVs, the smart, under digital well-being, that is under your security settings, you're able to put a lot of controls. Again, just like your phone works, you put in applications. So if you're on a VOD like uh, Prime Video or Netflix, the control really will not be on the device per se. It will be on the applications that your children are using. So like Netflix right now, it has um, accounts that you can customize for your children depending on age and also depending on the kind of content you want them to watch. So you customize that on the ap application. But then just like on your phone, digital well-being has some of those things that you can put in terms of screen time, when to put them, the, the TV will come on and go off. 
But again, our children have ways to circumvent these things. So don't really focus on the TV as an appliance, focus on the devices, focus on the applications that you're putting on the TV that they're accessing. I think it's not more of the of the TV, it's more of the content that they're consuming, yeah. Okay, I like that. Um, thank you, Evelyn, for those remarks. Um, someone else in the audience says, Patricia, she says, interesting conversations. I like the house chores and parents' responsibility on value-based creation. Um, I think that would support what Mongera was talking about, you know, take away the gadgets and, you know, let them be creative. Um, so, Mongera, your closing remarks um, in summary. Okay. Um, I think one key word that we can um, remember as parents is supervision, that um, one of the primary roles of a parent is to supervise. Now, there's this notion that, um, you know, we let children grow, we give them their space, we give them their privacy and all that. Um, I think when it comes to online and things that are happening online, um, the rule is that, you know, you might, it might be personal, but it's not private. So I have access to everything that you're seeing. It's stuff that relates to you, which is why it's personal, but it's not private. Um, I think privacy should be a privilege that we grant uh, based on trust. But in the meantime, we need to supervise. We need to make sure that we're on top of things and we know what our kids are doing, what they're doing online, who are they talking to, and not, not just abandon them. One of the things that we teach in our parenting classes is that uh, as parents, we need to unlearn the things that we learned growing up. You know, many of us grew up at a time when, you know, a lot of people around us are up to all sorts of mischief. People will be smoking, people will be having sex and doing all sorts of stuff that we considered um, unsavory at the time. And we did these things right under our parents' noses. And a lot of people got away with it. Um, and for some, it messed them up. The people who are drug addicts today because of the decisions that they made as children. They were not supervised, they were not guided, and they just sort of discovered on their own. So I think as parents today, the thing that we are going to have to deal with is our children's consumption of stuff online um, and content online. And how we manage that is a, is a critical uh, component of parenting. I think um, it's important that we also appreciate that our children uh, learn from us um, and they get their values from us. And we need to play a very critical role in setting a strong foundation for them to be able to stand up against what's coming, uh, what's coming. Because the truth is, guys, there's going to be a tsunami of information of all manner of evil. There's all these people who are out there trying to get your kids, trying to, to, to bring them down, trying to take advantage of them. Not everybody out there takes care or even gives uh, a hoot about your children. What they want to do is destroy them. And so we need to be the ones to stand there and protect our children from that. Uh, we also need to appreciate that um, children learn from a young age and they adopt behavior that they learn from a young age. You know, it's said that uh, you teach a child that the, in the way that they should go and when they're older, they will not depart from it. Um, that's a saying that has been said. Um, and the reality is that when we show kids the right way to go, when they're older, they don't depart from it. They're not going to learn these things overnight. They're not going to learn these things any other way. You know, they're not just going to figure it out on their own. We need to guide them. We need to show them. We need to teach them. That's what parents do and so i want to encourage every parent out there some of us are, are feeling like we are past um the threshold we feel like you know our kids are past they're done you know we can't help them anymore uh they're beyond redemption i want to say that it's possible at any point in time you can make a decision today to get involved with your child's um internet consumption today that child could be 16 years old and you've never sub, uh, su supervised them or guided them you can step in now today and make a difference in that child's life. So don't don't um, walk away from your kids. Uh, don't uh, you know, abandon them to their fate. Be the one who supports them in getting the right kind of foundation that will help them succeed in life. Um, so I just wanted to say, parents, uh, and, I, and I, it's amazing the kind of work that's being done out there, what the CA is doing, um, what people like uh, Eve Minette are doing, and, all, and what Parents Magazine is doing, just trying to get these conversations going. Um, there's a lot of resource out there. There's a lot of information that you can arm yourself with. But at the end of the day, it's your role as a parent. It's your responsibility to make sure that your children have the best chance of success. Don't abandon them. Uh, be with them. Walk with them. Help them. Support them to be the kind of parents, the kind of adults that you want them to be. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much for for that. Um, you know, when I remember when we were younger, we used to be very shy about talking to our parents um about anything really but i think in this day and age um it's it's a bit easier 
I'm not sure if it is, but um, it depends on, I think, the space that our parents um, allow allow the kids to, you know, make it easier for us, um, you know, to just have access to them. It's no longer the days when we used to be so, so shy about talking about anything, especially anything to do with sex. You know, it used to be a taboo. Um, it's, it's not a conversation that you openly have with your mom or your dad in that in that note, or your dad having that conversation with you, it, it it was quite different. And so I think even in this space, it's very um helpful that we can have this conversation. Um last but not least, Patricia, um perhaps you can even give us your insights about that, you know, the role of parents, um just being involved in our kids' lives. Um, how we allow, how you allow as a parent yourself to your child to be free with you, and also maybe just conclude um, on the role of CAK in all of this. Okay, uh, those are great insights. Uh, I'm also a parent to a 30 year old, so that's another different space altogether. But um, I want to say a couple of things. One. I want to encourage parents here. I want to encourage your I want you to encourage your friends, your relatives, your colleagues that there is help at hand. Because when it comes to using the internet, stuff does go wrong. Like your your daughter or your son can uh, actually um, send photographs to a friend who may even expose them on the on the internet. So help is at hand. Do not be overwhelmed. Do not give up. There are agencies such as CA and others. Like, for example, we have what we call the Kenya Incident, KSAT, Kenya Incident, Cyber Incident Response Team. We can pull down those images even as you report to the police and have something done about you. So don't get overwhelmed. That's one, there's help at hand. Two, complain. Please. This thing of we did a research one some time back where uh, Kenyans are known to tell each other. So I'll come and tell you, you know, my child was bullied online. Uh, this happened, this happened in school, but we never really complain where we are supposed to. Please lodge a complaint. We have an incident reporting platform, uh, which is the case at what I'm talking about here at CA. We are here to help you. We are paid by taxpayers to help you taxpayers money so reach out to any government agencies this year i also have a robust reporting mechanism do not let your ch children go abused go cyber bullied without uh, seeking help so uh as a parent uh, i subscribe to everything that has been said here by my fellow panelists it all starts with values a lot of it is really dependent on you and they say, really, um, your children are a reflection of really who you are. So you can really tell who someone is by the reflection of who their children turn out to be. And that's a, and that's a big thing. The other thing is, uh, it's a sacrosanct duty um, that we've been given by God to nurture these children, care for them, so that uh, uh, they become uh, digital, responsible uh, citizens. So you play your role, but also uh, recognize that uh, denying them the gadgets, switching off the TV or putting the TV in the bedroom and locking, those days are long gone. That's what we used to do when our children were younger, but that doesn't work anymore. Why? They are, they're using the internet as a learning platform. They are they're researching. They are, they are participating in Zoom meetings uh, like this. Uh, they are they are teacher parent conferences that they 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 are sometimes asked to participate or if they even discipline issues, uh, some of these online platforms are used. So uh, reach out for knowledge. Do not be overwhelmed by technology. There are simple applications that can teach you what to do, how to do. Because I find a lot of the parents actually, maybe Evelyn may bear me witness. They're just overwhelmed by this whole internet uh, applications, what's going on, and they just resign. So don't, you cannot resign your fate or the fate of your children to other 
other people. So as a state agency, we are committed to doing the right thing. The national ICT policy provides for COP inside uh, the policy, uh, the revised policy. So we are here uh, to help you, to provide information, to disseminate information, and to always uh, take part in, uh, in uh, forums such as this. So invite us to your school, to your chama, anywhere where we can come and just pro bono, uh, give some of these tips. Thank you very much and I appreciate your time. Thank you. You've heard um, invite CAK, they'll come, pro bono, you know, to just talk to the kids and um, even the teachers and even parents. Um, wow, thank you so much, guys. I'm just going to read the um, a few comments here. Um, Evelyn, thank you so much for putting the child helpline. That is 116. Um, it's a toll free number. Um, please put it up on the fridge. Yeah, that's what she said. Um, you'll need it. So, Olivia, thank you. Amazing panel. Thank you so much. Yes, it's going, uh, the toll free number will go to the fridge. Yeah, as a parent, Usipanik, there is help. Wow, thank you so much uh, for the comments. Um, yeah, Mongera, thank you. You say you have everything you need to raise successful adults. Don't let the internet scare you. So this is not the end of this conversation. This was just part one of this um, series of Family Online Safety. We'll be having another com uh, conversation on the same, um, but more details um, in terms of uh, ed the educators and, of course, um, other things that are involved in this conversation. So... Thank you so much, but we'll be communicating that on um, on on our Facebook pages, on our social media platforms, on the date and the time, and you can all join us. Also, this Zoom record uh, meeting is recorded, so after this session, we will post it, and you can also share it with um, your networks. Yeah, um, and then we will communicate. Uh, so that we can spread the message, yeah. And also, we are live on Facebook, so you can spread. Um, you can also share the link as well. So thank you so much. If you have any comments, please comment as well on the Facebook section, um, because the meeting for Zoom will end. But you, the this space at the, at the Facebook um, session, yeah. So thank you so much, guys. Have a lovely night. Um, I have been your moderator again, Diana from Parents Magazine, and we just hope that this conversation um, is going to make a lot of change and bring a lot of change um, in our families and with our kids. So thank you so much. Have a lovely night. Mm -hmm.